Hey everyone, this is Jim from Melatone Kits, and together we're going to build this wonderful sounding preamp. And while we're at it, I'll share my build techniques, tips, and tricks with you. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. And caution, soldering irons can have very high heat present and are a burn and fire hazard. Never leave a soldering iron unattended. And I highly recommend purchasing one with a variable temperature control and an auto off feature. Always have adequate ventilation when soldering. Okay, so you've just received a satisfyingly heavy box in the mail and you're just a raring to go. And I promise you, we will be building in the next episode. But first, let's get organized. This will pay off big time over the course of the build. If I was to give you one piece of advice, it, was, it would be to set up a neat and organized work area. Okay, let's do a quick run through of the E80CC kit preamp. So, on the input, we've got a pair of two pairs of RCAs on a simple switch. So whichever way the switch is pointing, that's the, that's the set of inputs that are live. And it's got a center off, which is a nice feature. Essentially, it's a detente switch, so there won't be any active input, even if there's a signal present. On the output side, we just have a single pair of RCA jacks. Over here, we have the uh, DC in, the heaters for for low noise purposes the heaters of the EADCC tubes um, are run on DC. AC is a noisy source for heaters so DC is quite a step up and uh, high, many high pieces of high-end tube gear will go DC for preamps especially. So that power comes from a switch mode power supply or for short an SMPS and we're going to use a 12 volt unit which is just fine. These have a center voltage of 12.6. 12, 12 is was just fine. Um, and, a, and, a, and a switch mode power supply is just that that brick that you use to power up your laptop. Same technology, same thing. Just a different voltage. There's an on-off switch for that, for the, for the heaters. And later on we'll talk about why that's actually quite a good advantage. Over here, now this is a dual mono design. Um, so essentially, we have two preamps inside one chassis. Now, what that gives us is an, an amazing stereo separation. And with a good stereo separation, we have we have an excellent sound stage, or at least we have the potential for all of the above if we've got a good design and a nice tube. And we have those things. So we, this, this preamp um, has a wonderful sound stage. Now, the, the heart of that, or any tube amp for that matter, is the, is the power supply circuit. That's what gives the juice to run everything, right? So if you, if you start with a good foundation, a good power supply, everything comes, will come good afterwards. <laughs> it's almost like English isn't my first language. Bear with me, folks. You know what I mean. So, we start off with an R-Core transformer. Now, you might say, if this is dual mono, how come we don't have two transformers? Well, in a way we do. This has twin secondary windings that are matched. And it's actually designed for a higher-end uh, phono preamp that is also a dual mono design. So it suits our purposes perfectly, and the voltage voltages are 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 excellent. They're they're right on what we wanted, and it's a universal transformer. So it can take the lower voltage countries that are let's say 110 to 120 volts AC on the mains. Or it can take the uh, higher voltage countries like the UK, Europe. Um, Australia, New Zealand, that are uh, 220 to 240 volts AC on the mains. Okay, so let's look under the hood here. So we've got um, 
we've got two large main filter capacitors. We've got two uh, chokes in the back. We've got a simple integrated IEC inlet with built-in fuse and lighted switch. Now, this is a hybrid design, so it makes liberal use of circuit boards, but dedicated circuit boards for each channel. And it also makes use of point-to-point -point wiring. So that's why it's a hybrid. So over here, we are going to have this power supply board for the left channel, power supply board for the right channel. So they're completely separate from each other. The filter stages are separate. From there, we go into the preamp board for the left channel and the preamp board for the right channel. The, you can see here the input, or can you? Let me just swing over here. This is the input where um, you, you, have, you have the capability of bringing two different uh, pieces of equipment and switching between them. And over here, we have a dual ganged uh, Blue Alps. Let me get it on camera. This is a good quality uh, potentiometer and good quality pots are critical for low noise and for longevity. Everybody who's played around with used equipment knows about scratchy pots. I've yet to see one of these things get scratchy on me. And one of the highlights of the, well we're going to go over the schematic but it's nice to point them out. We're using uh, Solon uh, fast caps. These these black beauties here, these are the coupling capacitors and they're absolutely critical for good sound. Okay, moving on. Your kit's going to be almost exactly like my kit, so it'll make it easy for you to follow along. And remember, and I remind you here, our prime objective is to build a great sounding preamplifier, but our second objective is to have fun. So you're going to hear me laugh as we build, and I'll laugh, be laughing at myself. That's fine. You, you can laugh along with me. But I have, when I'm building any amplifier, particularly a tube amplifier, because that's my thing, I have the most fun I can have building anything. I've always been a builder of things, and when it comes to building tube amplifiers, that's it's just just such a lot of fun. And I hope you can join in on the fun. So you're going to get a packing list. I'm really careful about playing the correct components, but this is a good reference. If you get stuck trying to figure out what's what, everything is keyed keyed in here to the schematic. And of course, C is a capacitor and R is a resistor, etc., etc. There's a hardware list as well, a wire and heat shrink list, the amp specifications. I'm not going to go over these. The specs are great, but there's there are other videos um, that I did under Tube Lab that talk in detail about the E80CC. So if you're interested, go back and find those. The frequency response graph, which is absolutely fabulous. Now, you might look at it and you say, Jim, the bass really rolls off hard. No, it doesn't. What we did was we wanted to zoom this in so you could see it in great detail. A lot of manufacturers zoom out, so you really can't see if there's any problems at a more detailed scale. So, normally I design... Um, for the minus, plus or minus one dB down point. You can't hear that difference. We, we don't start hearing differences until we start approaching, let's say, a three dB uh, change in volume, which is the half volume point, roughly. So minus one dB in the base, where is that? Well, that's somewhere around 13, 14 hertz, which is amazing. It's dead flat all the way until we get to almost 20k in which we have a very tiny drop-off. If you zoom in on 
this and we can in our program, it stays dead flat no matter how close the resolution is. Okay, here is the power supply schematic. Now it might look complicated, but remember we've actually got a dual mono design. So there's two channels pictured. Let's just cover one up. They're identical, of course. Now it's starting to look a lot simpler, isn't it? We just have to build two of these circuits. Now, because it's a universal power transformer, it can handle voltages anywhere in the world. So the lower voltage regions, such as the United States, Canada, they're going to be around 120 volts AC. That's going to be the house voltage, or mains, as the Brits call it. And much of the rest of the world is higher voltage, 220 to 240. That would be uh, the UK, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, etc. So you just pick whichever one is your zone, and you wire accordingly. Now I'm going to show how to wire e both of them, so you don't need to worry about it. It's not hard. From the after the primary side of the power transformer, you have the secondary. The secondary is identical no matter where you are in the world. And then we've got the preamp schematic. It looks really simple, and it is. Now, you might say, Jim, there aren't that many components on this schematic. I, I think I'm getting ripped off. Well, for good, high-quality sound, in my opinion, the fewer components in the signal chain, the better. <laughs> so, let's just look at one example. We're going to go over this in detail when you build it. So here's a coupling capacitor at the entrance. This is your RCA in right here. And the signal comes here onto the grid. And we're going to take it off the first stage. Remember the E80CC is a twin triode. So there's two tubes inside one glass envelope. So we take the signal off of the plate here. Now normally you don't want to put high voltage onto the grid of the next stage. So you would put a coupling capacitor here. Well, this design is direct coupled. There's no coupling capacitor required. So, one less capacitor, less noise, potentially, and less coloration. So, it's a good thing to have less. Less is more in this case. Okay, next we've got the plinth. It's very simple. It's, it's made out of a hardwood cherry, nicknamed black cherry, because of how it gets dark as it ages. It's pre-drilled and I pre-assembled it and it's going to be pre-sanded. So all you have to do is put it together. There'll be, you know, an episode just on dedicated to doing this properly. And there's four corner blocks. Now, the one thing you should be aware of with cherry is that it oxidizes or darkens with exposure to air. And sunlight really accelerates that. So, you want to get it out of your box and you want to store it properly to get it sort of acclimatized to your house. So you want to put it somewhere that is at room temperature, dry, and not in direct sunlight. Now the reason for that is, and you have to sticker it carefully, so the reason for that is if you were to stick it on, let's say, a windowsill sitting like this, the sun would expose this area and darken it quite quickly. But this area underneath it here, this whole area would stay, would still stay fairly blonde or light. So how you do the stickering is this. Stand it upright somewhere on a shelf or something like that. And just separate it like that. That's all you need to do. And we're going to get actually to putting this together and putting a finish on it fairly early in the build because we need it finished. Okay, here's the top plate. This is my favorite way to build a quality custom amplifier. I use really heavy uh, gauge aluminum. This is 3 sixteenths of an inch thick, or 5 millimeters, I think. And I use uh, a brush finish with a hand waxed surface. And that gives sort of a matte finish. It'll still reflect, as you can see here in the, in the lights. But um, it makes for, I think, the sort of like the, the best appearance um, 
you can get because you don't want the plate to be, you know, too ultra shiny and bouncing light all over the place. The plinth itself, your cherry should be nice and um, flat looking. Really what you want is the whole thing to look integrated as, um, as a high quality um, preamp should. And the glow of the tubes really at night, especially with the room lights down, should dominate the, the view, in my opinion. So everything is flat. The paint surfaces are flat. But the only thing that really is shiny is the gold RCAs. So this is the top. There, so this has got the hand buffed wax surface. Now, aluminum top plates like this are wonderful for all kinds of good reasons that I've just started going over. They have one weakness, and that is that they're prone to scratching. So work with a, uh, a sacrificial cloth. This is just the drying uh, towel from the kitchen. It's 100% cotton. That's a great thing to have if you're working because it doesn't, it won't catch fire easily. It doesn't mean that you can, you know, try to light it on fire. Don't do that. But it, what it does is it helps protect the plate. So most of the time when you're working, you're going to have actually the good side down. This is the working side. So it's not going to be as perfect as the top. And in fact, you're going to get blobs and it's unfinished. There's no wax on there. Uh, you're going to get blobs of solder and flux on this, and um, you're just going to and you're going to scratch it. You're going to make a god awful mess of it. But trust me, when you have all the parts on, all the wires all over the place, you won't notice any of that. Just do as neat a job as you can. And that reminds me, actually, below the video, there is a link to soldering 101, and it, it I talk in detail about the um, about the tools um, and supplies that make soldering so much easier. Okay, now one of the key things to keep in mind is that the the underside of the plate, the working side where you're going to build your preamp, is unfinished. And the reason for that is whenever we connect up something that needs a ground return. This is the ground return. The whole top plate becomes the ground return. So we want good electrical connections. So wherever we're going to have a ground connection, we're actually going to take a little bit of black 120 grit paper and we're just going to clean off. Here's one right here. We're just going to clean off, do a little cross hatch. I'll show you when we get to that point, just to make sure we have a perfect ground connection. Okay, here are the large parts that are in the box. We've got a pair of Hammond chokes. Hammond is a great high quality Canadian manufacturer. Some of their stuff is made offshore in China and some of it is, is made in North America, uh, but the quality is just unbeatable. And it's worth the extra money. Here's the R-Core transformer. And there's going to be uh, two sets of transformer covers. Now you can have your transformer cover can be uh, silver anodized or it can flat silver anodized or it can be flat black anodized. And I match the front knob to that. In fact, uh, in the um, in the prototype build, we've got black covers and we've got a silver knob. If you want to look at at what the silver anodizing looks like, just go back in the video. Now these are going to arrive with um, exterior painters tape on them because we this is going to be in the public eye. We want these to be absolutely perfect. So I'll show you how to get the tape off easily um, when we get to putting the covers on. Okay, there's going to be a big bag of parts. Now let's just unload it so you can get an idea of what's going to be in the kit. There's going to be your wiring and your heat shrink pack. This is actually a great place to keep your wire. So I just leave them in the Ziploc. There's five uh, printed circuit boards, PCBs. And they, um, let's just take a really quick look at them. Here's the one that goes with the uh, Blue Alps. It just makes connecting up to the 
to the to the pot so much easier and you can make a, a nice job of it. Here is our universal preamp PCB and it's really well labeled. It's got a, a working top surface and of course it keys in with all the documents that you get. So you know R7 you can easily... Now this is a universal board so depending on um, which kit you're building will depend on what parts you use. So the schematic is key to this. So you will have some slots that aren't going to be used. And then there's it's a dual sided board so you'll have some parts that go on the, the back side of it. And this is the side that actually faces, this is where the socket goes, this is the side that faces up towards the plate. So there's a couple of those and then there's our universal power supply board and same thing they're really well labeled they're dual sided boards but they're mirror boards look at my, my son Charles designed these boards he did a great job but look what he snuck in he got our logo in there and um, so they're dual sided so this is side A and if you flip it over this is side B and the reason for that is because when we build the kit we want the all of the ins and outs, um, let me get it right, I got it backwards, I always do it backwards. So the connection for the, the filter capacitor and the choke are all coming up the middle. So by being able to flip the board over like this into a mirror, we have an identical board and we'll have access in a mirror fashion. It, it, I've never seen anybody else do this and I think it's a great innovation. It takes a bit of doing, <laughs> but uh, this is this is the sort of thing that's right in my son Charles's wheelhouse, and uh, he's just been a great partner to have on board. Okay, that's the circuit boards. What else have we got in here? Going to have a hardware pack, and. What I recommend you do is that you either get one of those plastic trays that fishermen use to put their lures and sort them out, or if you're cheap like me, just, and you like to recycle, which is a good thing, just get yourself an old, uh, a, an empty egg carton and just sort your hardware out. You don't even have to write down what it is, just sort it out. You can pull the hardware pick list to help you and it'll only take you a few minutes and it'll, believe me it'll make finding what you're looking for so much easier what else have you got here all of your electronic parts are all in one bag and same thing sort them out now the one thing that you're going to have to um, sort electrically unless you know how to read the bands of resistors. I used to know how to read the bands of resistors because back in the day when I first started building stuff, I didn't have a volt ohm meter, so I couldn't even test resistors. So I have to, <laughs> have to read the band. Um, but I've lost that ability over the years. And I'll show you at the end of this video how to sort these electrically. So we got a, a couple of large Nishikon high quality filter capacitors. These are uh, 390 microfarad, which is UF, right? 450 volts. And these are really good quality. They're essential to a low noise preamp. And they're in a bag because they're going to actually be exposed on the top plate. So we don't want to scratch the surface before you have a chance to put them on carefully. And Nishikon knows that you can do stuff like that. You will be possibly exposing your capacitors, or at least you want to see a nice looking capacitor. So they always make them with really good quality jackets. And then you've got a big bag of hardware, the pots in here, all kinds of stuff. What I recommend you do is the same thing you, you do with your... Um, you do with your fasteners. You probably only need one of these trays. Probably will do the, the, the all the small stuff that's the hardware as well as all the fasteners. 
and I would take a second one and I do the electrical parts. And I'm going to show you that right now. Okay, let's clear the decks here. Okay, so get your volt ohm meter up, get it into resistance, into the ohm function, and just go through your resistors one at a time. So let's, I'm just going to do one with you here. Having clips is great. If you don't have clips, if you just have probes, you can just put it down and just press firmly and that'll give you a good reading. So I'm getting 47.2 K. So that's 47 K. Now, all resistors, all capacitors have a plus and minus. Now, most of the resistors are metal films, so they're plus or minus 1%. Most capacitors, though, have a much wider range, and they're very typically plus or minus 10%. And normally, electrolytics actually test lower than their stated values. Just a thing, designers are well aware that there's a lot of room um, for variation in actual um, spec on filter capacitors. So it's nothing to worry about. Some key resistors I've actually matched and we'll talk about that as we build. So you don't need to worry about that. What you do want to do though is clip on, find out what your value is, and just come over to your little tray and just mark 47k. This is all I do. Now 47k of course is 47,000 ohms, right? That's why we abbreviate it. And 47R, R just means ohms. It's just an easy way of notating it. it. Just means 47 ohms. And as we work on this, we'll go over those things. And in our next build video, we're going to build the power supply boards and just get it going. Cheers, everyone.